This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Yes, I said it, a biscuit-headed grower. Now, you can hear right now that my voice is a little hoarse. You have bacteria right now trying to take down the aquaponics god. Got viruses trying to invade the throat of the aquaponics god. Well, they have already invaded, but we're going to get rid of those. But the show must go on no matter what. So with that being said, um, I want to go ahead and get into this um, episode here. We have a gentleman by the name of Paul um, who submitted a video, and we're going to go through and check out his review. Anyone else that wants to have their system um, uh, analyzed or your schematic or blueprint uh, reviewed, submit it at Brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com. Submit me a video. I don't want to see any text. Um, you can send images and a video explaining your design and then we'll be able to go over it and feature it in this episode and I'll be able to help you out and allow other people to be able to um, uh, 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 capitalize off of the information and the uh, review and the help that I provide. So that's what we want to do here and we want to build up the community um, and allow everyone to have an experience and um, information that they, can, uh, that they can use. So with that being said, let's get right into checking out my man Paul's uh, system that he has running and we'll provide some feedback. Let him know what he's doing good. Let him know that we, what we can change and any suggestions. Hello, Brooklyn St. Michael. This is Paul from Strongsville, Ohio. And I am really grateful for the opportunity to show you my uh, aquaponics experiment and see what kind of advice you can help me with or your comments on what I'm doing. So I set this up about three months ago in a five gallon aquarium in a real tiny grow bed. We had some success getting the uh, seeds started right in the grow bed and a couple with rock wool. And um, after enough growth that I had no vacancy left in my container and no room for the occupants, I decided to move it up a little bit because as an experiment that seemed to be working, I felt confident that I could expand a little bit. So what we have here is a, quite a makeshift lighting system. And um, I'm sure I'm underlit, but for the time being, it seems to be sufficient. Tomato plant on the left and in the front are doing well. I trimmed the tomato plant back considerably last weekend. Um, it just seemed like some of the lower branches might be using more of the nutrient than they needed to. And I wanted to try to produce some fruit as quickly as possible just to make sure that the experiment was successful. and and give me a, a good reason to move on to a larger system. I'm doing this simply because we have two deer factions in the neighborhood, the OG Rudolphs and a new group that moved in, the uh, Bloody, bloody uh, Antlers, I believe they're called. I have plenty of room to grow outside, but living in Northeast Ohio, it's certainly not going to be year round. And with the deer that we have, it's just not possible to grow outside without them devouring whatever comes out of the ground. So I decided that, uh, yeah, they win and I'm going to move indoors, which is fine. So down here we have a 27 gallon tote with 12 calico goldfish that are, well, they seem to be doing real well. I had great success raising piranha and many community tanks. So uh, caring for fish is not a, a problem for me. My water parameters are great for the fish. My ammonia is negligible, nitrite's negligible, nitrate is uh, working like it's supposed to. My pH is a little below 7, a little above 7. It hovers back and forth. I don't want to freak out if it goes a little bit one way or the other. And that is smart. So the parameters look sound really good. Um, sounds like everything is doing good with the water quality. And yeah, you don't want to be trying to perfect the um, pH um, because all that's going to do is put you in a bigger hole. So if it's fluctuating a little bit lower than 7, a little bit above 7, that's totally fine. It stays right in that right in that range. I've got a very small pump here in the, in the front on the left just to kind of pick up some of the the uh, waste that is not being moved. I, and that's the question one. What do you suggest? Should I add a sump or perhaps just some sort of a filtration system inside to remove that, that uh, hard particle waste that is not, uh, not really beneficial anyway around? Um, 
So this is exactly what um, we want to do. I'm glad you showed that right here. So you have your pump set up. Um, your pump is, it looks like it's a lot higher um, than, than the force that it has able to, that it's able to suck. So the suction power on that small pump is not strong enough to pick up those solids there. Um, and one thing that you have to understand is that flow rate and, and the, uh, the, the size of the pump is one of the determining factors on how effective um, a tank is at removing solid waste. So you have a small uh, a pump here, and one thing is since you have, an, you have a flood and drain system, you don't have any other water flow coming in from the um, opposite side, moving the solids along and then uh, picking it up. So what I would suggest here in this situation, this is what I would recommend you do for this particular setup. One, you have an option. You can sit there and you can manually clean it, but obviously that's something that you don't want to do. That's not what you're looking to do. Uh, so what, you, uh, what I would suggest you do is you're going to need a separate sump tank. You're going to need a separate sump tank for this particular system for, to allow automatic cleaning. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to rearrange this setup. Because the way you have it here, it doesn't really optimize for uh, a solid uh, removal. So we're going to have to do some arrangements. One, you're going to have to take your sump, uh, your fish tank, and you're going to have to make that the highest point in the system. You're going to move that up. Um, below the sump tank is where you're going to have your, um, uh, I mean, excuse me, not below the sump tank. Below the fish tank is where you're going to put your media bed. And then you're going to have a separate sump tank on the bottom. So this is how this is going to work. In your fish tank, what you're going to do is you're going to place what is called a solids lifting overflow. Solids lifting overflow. And it just have a piece of pipe at the bottom that, um, that, that pretty much extends just, just above the bottom of the um, fish tank um, where you can have solids lift out of it. Um, and it's a PVC pipe. And you'll drill on the side of your tank. Um, and that from that, that um, and, and from there, that those solids will then lift up out of there, and then they will go into the media bed. This is how you're going to get these solids from uh, recirculating through the system. They're going to leave that, go to the media bed, where they'll be kept and processed. The, then your system will flood and drain, and then it'll come down to the sump. But the key is you have to have constant movement of the water. That's what's missing in this system here. Since it's a flood and drain, like I said, you don't have nothing that's pushing. You only have one thing that's sucking. Um, which which is not giving adequate uh, flow movement or water movement for solids removal. So when you have your sump tank, you have your sump tank, you have your pump in the sump tank, it's constantly pushing water up to the fish tank. The fish tank is constantly uh, moving the water uh, uh, along the, um, the, the bottom of the fish tank, along with the fish movement, which is also aiding and agitating the solids. It's coming out of the solids lift overflow, and it's doing it in one motion, and it's continuous. It's continuous, which is which is what which is the key that it's continuous. So the the key to this setup here is you have to make sure since you are using since you're using a flood and drain system, the key is to make sure you have a sump tank that's large enough so when the water comes out and it fills up all the the, the media bed, you still have enough water in there so your pump doesn't run dry. So that is the key that you need uh, in order to set this system uh, up correctly in order for automatic solids removal automatic solids removal so it's just going to be constantly going come up uh come across come out of the solids of overflow get processed in the media bed come down to the sump tank that is what you need to do if you want it to be automatically set up for cleaning and you need to also make sure you have a pump that is pushing the solids fast enough when we get in more into the video um we're going to see that your flow rates are very small you have very small uh, flow rates so like i said water movement is the, one of the biggest factor is the biggest factor on uh, solids removal. So that's one. That's my suggestion on how we would fix that. We're using a 140 gallon pump that I've got turned down so it's probably pumping at 110 or 120 gallons an hour if, if, if the specs from the manufacturer are accurate and that's going into a, a half inch ID plastic hose and then up here into the grow bed in the back corner. So the, that right there you said is pumping at 110 gallons per hour you have to uh you also have to consider the head height when they have pump ratings that's uh, assuming that your water your your pump it doesn't have to lift any water up the the as when the pump has to lift water up the efficiency of the pump get be, uh, begins to drop so you may not it doesn't look like when we continue going in the video it doesn't look like you're pushing 110 gallons an hour it looks more like you're pushing maybe 50 or 60 gallons per hour uh, going through there. So that is one thing that is contributing to, uh, th that is going to be a factor in the solids removal in the system. We have a, uh, I'm using a, a flood and drain, so we're using a bell siphon. 
uh, three-quarter ID pipe there with a two-inch uh, bell and cap. The bottom of the container is uh, not flat. It's uh, corrugated and has lines that, that run into the center. So um, I, I think that might solve some of the problem of debris sitting on the bottom. All right. Now I also had an overplant problem with the uh, with the romaine, and that's another biscuit head move that I've made. It's all right, man. Look, we all make these type of mistakes. Don't even worry about it. Long as you learn from it and don't make it again, that'll bring you out of the category of the biscuit headed growers. But um, and cut up, cut some of it off. I cut quite a bit of it off. And I'm not real sure if that's going to make it or if that's going to become more of a sacrificial lamb in this system. That ain't going to make it. That thing is done. That's the sacrificial lamb right there. Out of there. The cucumber back here seems to be doing really well. We've got good tendrils growing. They're grabbing on, moving. And, and, and we have good growth from this one. We just have a, a color difference. They came from the same batch of seeds. And it seems to be fairly healthy. I'm not sure if uh, the reason that this looks maybe starved of nutrient is because my water supply is coming in from the other side. So that would be another question. Should I consider a different way to deliver the water into my grow system? Being of this size or, or of any size, is, is that an issue? So that, that's another question that I have for you. No, this is what you want to do. So you're, I do see there are deficiencies in this system here. I can see that there are deficiencies in different and various plants, even the plants that you have on the left, there's deficiencies in there, um, and all, even the plants on the right. So this is not uh, an issue of where you're placing the, your, your water flow entrance. It's an issue of you don't have enough nutrients in the system. Your feeding rates, I'm not sure where your feeding rates are, but the, a lot of people confuse because they have uh, an adequate amount of nitrates that they assume that the rest of the nutrients in the system are adequate. Nitrate is only one nutrient, one nutrient that the plant requires. The, there, there's pl a plethora of other macro and micronutrients that the plant requires, and those come. Uh, the vast majority of those are going to come from the feed and some things we have to supplement, like iron uh, and potassium, so and calcium, um, uh, depending on your water source, what you have in your water source, but. Um, this is a nutrient deficiency. Not enough feed is going is being put in the system. You don't have enough nutrients that are being uh, uh, processed, even mineralized in these in, in the um, the media bed. So that's what the um, the, the uh, these plants are showing a, a, a sign of nutrient deficiencies. So we have to fix the feeding rate. This is why it's important to have calculated feeding rates and to know exactly how much feed input needs to go into the system in order to get X amount of output. This is why it's important to stick to the fundamentals. Of aquaponics, which have been laid out uh, in, in, the, in the in the inception of aquaponics when it first started, those have already been figured out and calculated. So this is a nutrient deficiency, a feed deficiency, more than likely. Um, I, I plan to add more lighting. I believe that that's something that's necessary. Let me put something in here again. This is just makeshift, um, just some welding clamps and C clamps that I had and some steel. I don't want to put a whole lot of money into this. As I said, it's just kind of an experiment. It seems to be successful, but I'm not sure. I don't have any vegetables yet. This is three months. Three months since I started out with a small five-gallon aquarium and a very small grow bed in here. This same bell siphon set up, of course, a much shorter standpipe. This uh, grow bed height is about 10 inches right now, and most of my plants are right around here. It, it, it looks like it's dry on the top and it's not uh, dry much more than maybe an inch at the most, half an inch. And we've got plenty of moisture. The standpipe comes to about here. Not real sure if I'm giving you a good enough angle to see. And the, and, and the reason that I don't have the standpipe any higher is I found that uh, with the grow media I'm using which is a expanded clay pellet it floats I'm sure you're uh, uh, familiar with that and um, because of that uh, I find that this uh, debris pipe wants to dance around so in order to keep it in place I, I 
just kind of lowered the standpipe a little bit. So yes, this is exactly what you were supposed to do. You don't want your uh, water level and media beds to come and rise all the way to the top. When it does that, algae begins to develop and form on your um, on your media, and then that becomes problematic. They begin sucking nutrients out of the system, and we don't want to grow algae. We want to we want to grow uh, uh, plants and other vegetables. So that's so you did a good job for doing that. You don't want to have it at this uh, at, at the surface. This is a rock wool with some uh, bib lettuce that I'm I've started. And um, I've moved out of its little box out here to get some more light. And it seems like it's doing all right. So this is my system. It's an experiment, but I, I really would like to expand it into a, a, a bigger system. I've got the green light from, from the misses, so I don't want to make a biscuit head move and spend some money that I really don't need to spend if I'm making some mistakes here. Yeah, so this is, overall you have... A, a nice system set up, but there's a few things, like I said, a few a, a, a rearrangements that you can make and a, the addition of a sump tank. That is going to help you tremendously. It's going to help solve a lot of these issues that you have, and it's just going to be, it's going to give your system more versatility, which is what we want to look for and make your uh, operation that much more effective. So everything else, I mean, you have pretty much everything down. Uh, just a, it's just a, a learning process that you're going to have to continuously grow through, and you'll fine tune your growing skills and your uh, your building skills, but you just have a few f things to fine tune, and that's it, man. You, you, it looks like a really good uh, job that you're doing here, um, and you know it, it's it's just a good job. If, if if you have an opportunity to provide any advice for me, I certainly would appreciate it. I'd like to add, I'm really glad that you made it through the storm safely. I'm I'm very sorry for your loss. I made a comment that cooler heads prevail, and you certainly proved to anyone watching that uh, there's no reason to get all worked up over things you can control. You can't control the storm, but you can certainly control how you react to it. And that is very true. Yeah, I want to thank you for leaving that comment and uh, providing your support. I do miss my sheep kick a lot, man. She was a. It took a long time for us to build that relationship, um, and she was a really good sheep. Uh, but now she's passed on to the afterlife. And um, that's just what it is. But yep, as far as that, um, you got to stay strong, got to keep your, your, your mind um, in the right direction. And that's the only way you can, you know, make it through a lot of tough times um, and be able to move on um, and, and move, move forward in life. Well, if you have an opportunity to view this and share it, I, I certainly appreciate it. And again, thank you for the forum. And thank you for everything you're showing us. You have a great day. This is Paul from Strongsville, Ohio, signing out. Thank you, my man, Paul. Thank you for sending your video. I appreciate it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that learn something from this video. They see that you're growing with aquaponics. You're setting it up. You're getting going. And that's a, lot of, that's a lesson to a lot of people. Sometimes you just need to get out there and start building. Um, you, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they want to take a long time to learn. But, you know, you can only learn so much visually before you have to get out there and start putting things together and tweaking things um, and then uh, getting the hang of things and, and, and tweaking your, your, your growing skills. So, Paul, thank you very much once again. Um, I look forward to seeing the rest of this system whenever you put it all together and you expand it. Um, stick to the fundamentals of aquaponics. We're not growing and doing beauty pageants with aquaponics. It's a very simple, basic system. Um, we can just tweak it a little bit and make it that much more versatile and more effective um, uh, for your grower experience. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Whoa! That, that's, all I got, that's all I got for you guys today. I can't give you a, a full, powerful one, but that's it for right now. So hang in with me, and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>